Oh, Mike. Mike. What, Tony? What? That what? That intro what? was so HD. <laughs> Mike, this <laughs> video is so HD. You're right. It is. What's going on? What could this possibly mean, Mike? <laughs> I think it means, Tony, that we're, we're playing the Ratchet & Clank HD collection version of Ratchet & Clank 3 now. Mike, it looks very different. There's oh, a lot does. of there's a lot of really different looking things that are going on in this game. I gotta say, I I, got, I gotta say to start with, it looks really nice. Yes, absolutely. Uh, oh yeah, the textures are pretty phenomenal. I think the one thing that shocked me the most was that uh, the Quark comics are no longer so much better looking than everything else in the game. <laughs> That's true. That's true. The the game is is uniformly good looking now, isn't it? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's it's pretty incredible. Uh, the, how how much texture work they did to res all this up. You will never succeed. I when if you look at these side by side, it's uh, it's a marked difference. It, it doesn't even look like the same game when you look at them side by side. Uh, it's pretty incredible. Uh, I'm pr really, really impressed with what they did on the, uh, on the HD collection. And uh, if anyone from Idle Minds is watching this, we are going to pick it apart and into little tiny pieces and talk about everything that's different. But we're going to do it in the spirit of, of love. Uh, it's, I mean, it's more for the sake of pointing things out rather than saying it should be one way or another. It's Wait, just... so, so you're saying that just because it's different doesn't make it bad? Yes. I'm implying that it can be different and not be worse. What? <laughs> you know, it was... I I think that's unacceptable, Tony. In the age of the internet, you can only take one side. I'm sorry. Well, then I'm going to go on the side that it's good. Okay. I'm taking that well, position. Uh, one, one thing that is bad, though, uh, you put the wrong fucking pack on Ratchet. No! No, no, no. Okay. We're going to clear this up really quickly. Um... In order to be kind to Mike and not have to force him to play through again, yeah, another uh, go. Uh, I took and, on... And you didn't get all the weapons? I took... I sat down and played through the whole HD collection up until this point uh, so we could get caught up and then just start playing again right where we left off. That's pretty phenomenal. Thank you, Tony. Uh, and given that I am much, much better at Ratchet and Clank than Mike is. I was able to do it with a lot more bolts, uh, a lot fewer weapons, the better weapons, the better rocket pack, and uh, with less levels, because I don't die as much as Mike does. I just would like to point out that uh, you were able to do it with fewer bolts because you didn't buy the weapons. I mean, now that I bought all the weapons, you no, have the no, same no, 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 no. I, when we started, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm putting this out right now. I was looking at the comparison <laughs> of where you were in the Courtney Gears battle. You had 25,000 bolts in the Courtney Gears battle in our previous video, around there. Go back and look it up, people. I'm right on this one. <laughs> when I handed yeah, over I... the save to you, you had almost 400,000 bolts. The only reason you have the same amount of bolts right now is because you were able to afford that wonderful suit of armor that you have on that now, which costs 250,000 bolts. Pay no attention to the armor, people. And that is the only reason why it appears you have the same number of bolts, because... Damn it. Okay. Tony did it with more bolts That's right. Than I, did. I did it with a lot more bolts than you did. I went back. I did all the arena. I did uh, a lot of sewer crystal farming. Uh, I pretty much got up to this point. So... I have a lot of, a, I have definitely seen a lot of this HD collection, and I am in fact quite the authority on what is different. Uh, so I'm not coming into this blind, and I think Mike isn't coming into this blind either. So, um, I'm going to say firsthand, first off, I've actually been talking a little bit on Twitter with a couple people about this. Uh, that sounded horrible when I hear it coming out of my mouth. But, I just Why never thought funny? I'd be one Why of the people that, that said like, oh I've been talking about this on my Twitter. 
That's it's not the kind of man that I am. I'm gonna put that out there right now. There's a uh, there's something different about these shots. There's for sure. For sure. It looks is. like they uh, like most of your effects like aren't working, Tony. That's not my effect. Isn't that your effect? No. Oh, okay. Never mind. Most of my effects are working perfectly. What? And I was actually gonna say this. Uh, I actually was joking about this to some people. There's a couple weird persistent bugs that are that are uh, existing in the game. Uh, there's a, tar a persistent targeting bug, which is very weird. On the, uh, the enemy's part, though, not on Ratchet's part, at least. Right. Um, there is a couple of effects bugs that are pretty weird. But all my enemies seem to have remained pretty much entirely intact from where they were without you know any of these new bugs introduced. And my theory... Is it that, because you're such a great programmer? Today? That's not what I think at all. That's not. <laughs> I think that my stuff was so broken that they had to go back in and fix them, uh, and then that's the only reason the bugs don't exist. On <laughs> and and what makes you think that they were that broken? I'm just I just know how. And this is the other. This is basically what we were talking about uh, uh, online is that there was so much hacky stuff that went into this game. Uh, I am amazed that it worked at all. Uh, given how hacked and, and pieced together it was just to work on the PS2, uh, I am amazed that this thing worked. Well, that's a, that's a good point. Uh, what, uh, we haven't talked a lot about how many hacks we had to do to get really good performance out of the PS2. Uh, I mean, we, we did a lot, didn't we? We did a lot. And, I mean, the loading code in particular was was unbelievable. And I remember that there were nights when Gavin, Gavin Dodd, uh, when things were loading slowly, uh, he had to basically go through and look through the disk and look at the actual physical disk and see where the data was being written on the physical location on the disk. And the things that we needed to stream faster, he had to make sure got written on the inner part of the disk where the seek times were faster so we could load faster off of them. Right. And anything that we didn't have to load as much would go on the outer edge of the disk. And I, I had, remember him doing that, yeah. He had to make sure that the data was written on the right location on the disk so that we could have our load times be not horrible. Right, we were targeting about five seconds for for a load from the beginning of uh, of when Ratchet takes off in his ship until he shows up on the planet. I mean, well, there's also just the stuff that we stream off the disc, sounds that have to stream off the disc and things like that, that have to play right when we want them. Uh, right, we don't want a delay while it tries to find them. Right, so it has to be it had to be written on the exact right part of the disc in order for it to work properly. I don't even know how that could possibly work when you're trying to, because I know that code is in there. That code is in there and the, that does that kind of stuff. I well, don't. That know. code is on the on the PS3 too. It's not like uh, it's not like that that doesn't happen anymore. They're still doing it. Right, but right, but what I'm saying is it was optimized on the fact that it was written on a blue on a DVD disc. Right, right, right. not on a Blu-ray disc. There's stuff in there <laughs> specifically that are like, okay, we're on a DVD. It has 4.7 gigabytes of storage. We know it's gonna like that kind of stuff exists. That kind of stuff is written in the game. That that's all broken at this point. At least I would imagine it. It all completely broke down the minute you're trying to do it again. Uh, yeah, I mean they must have they must have started on DVDs and at some point had to move to Blu-rays. And at that point, I mean, I mean, do you remember when we were on CDs for Ratchet One and had to move to DVDs? It was a huge mess. And right. that was and that was something that we had been planning on and intending the whole time. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> this this never was intended to happen. I mean, and then there's the fact that there's three games on the disc, right? So even if all three games need their streaming data written on the inner part of the disc, that doesn't work. It doesn't work. <laughs> you can't do yeah, that. Yeah, they had to come they had to come up with virtual discs or something to I, I don't even I don't know even, how yeah, they would do that. I, I can't even imagine the amount of frustration that would come into the part of just dealing with our hacky, optimized PlayStation 3 code. Yeah, yeah I mean, that was, uh, like, that. that is so far out of my ball game that I can't even... So, kudos. Kudos to the poor people at Idle Minds who had to unravel that ball of yarn. And then one of the other things uh, that we were talking about, I, I was talking about you, like, the day I got this, is that... 
for all you've been going on about the shadow volume effect. <laughs> I noticed that the, too, In yeah. the game, uh, it appears that Idle Minds has put in better shadows in the game. Uh, they right. just they just look better and obvi- and and they look accurate and they're not made of pills and spheres and whatever. How our, our shadows were done, uh, they're actually proper shadows that aren't done with shadow volumes anymore. But since there are no shadow volumes anymore, the shadow volume effects are now gone. Right. Now gone entirely. And they've been replaced with other effects that may or may not be better. Right. Well, they're different for sure. And yeah. uh, the one that I noticed the most is being the most different is when you shoot, when you kill an enemy with like the rocket launcher or yeah, right there when he died and they explode into their flaming rubble. Uh, the flaming rubble used to be done with shadow volumes. Right. And now it's just uh, an effect that exists on the rubble and it looks right. different. It just It's just a different effect. It's we were able effect. We were able to get a sense that the effect was happening in 3D when we used the shadow volumes because it it appeared to match the way that they looked on screen. Right. Uh, you know, because usually the way that you do that kind of effect is you take a couple uh, uh, billboards that always face the camera, right, and play them over each other, and bam, you've got a, an effect. But it looks 2D. It doesn't necessarily look 3D. So that's that's one of the reasons why those effects look so different. Right. So that was that's, that's one of the big change. And then there's one thing that I can't quite put my finger on uh, exactly what, what, what different, but seems like something that the way they do alpha has changed in a few places like uh, nefarious's head like nefarious's head you can notice it on the water the water is now just a single texture instead of our two scrolling textures i suspect right. that has to do because one of them was just an alpha texture um and and it probably looked really garbled and awful it probably did yeah and they probably couldn't make new water because <laughs> i mean that's you know what it is uh, yeah, that's what I suspect I mean, is going on with these shots here. Since the alpha is different, they're not alphaing correctly, and that's why they lose their shape a little bit. Um, and so I, it's I can't f- figure exactly what changed, but that definitely seems to be a place where something changed, uh, where you get a lot of differences. Shadow volumes, alpha. Uh, they also changed the fog. I noticed, like you can see, you can see a lot further, which makes it look really cool. It seems like they just removed the uh, fog. It's. Uh, I, I think it's still there. Like you can see the the buildings kind of fogging out a little in the distance. They might have just pulled it way, way back. Though. Yeah, just so you, you know, um, so you could see further. Yeah. But some sometimes that means you can see geometry that we hadn't hadn't really intended for you to see. We, yeah, we certainly had. We certainly made a lot of these levels. It's with a much uh, it's very ball. evident in the forest level, uh, Florana. Uh, I'll go. I'll go back Aquatos and yeah, as well. uh, On which one? Aquatos. Oh yeah. Okay. I'll go back and take some footage of those levels, and, and we can show you some comparison shots. Uh, but yeah, you can you can definitely see a lot further. And on Aquatos, I mean, we were using the fog effect to make it look like we were underwater. So right. pulling the fog effect back could have a big difference yeah, but for sure you know for a lot of these things it, it was you know uh if they had to solve a problem they had to solve the problem everywhere yeah sure so but just to get off the hd collection a little bit mike uh this is my level i don't know if you know is this, this your is level? my level i worked on this level. I, I i knew that the tyranoids were yours but i didn't know this was your oh level. i i did i did a lot of work on this level because uh this is the first level and this is one of the one little fun story about development uh where we switch all the tyranoids to the robo tyranoids right. and as a result all the tyranoids across the game from here on out have to become robo tyranoids oh god they did didn't they they did even in the levels you've already been to even in the levels you've already been to and that was a pain in the ass it was such a pain in the ass but tony i mean couldn't you just flip a switch? I mean, why why was it such a pain in the ass? Mike, I mean, because memory is always a Oh, pain in the you ass. had to store two copies of the guy. Well, that's what we did at first. At first we were like, okay, every level that has a tyranoid has two copies Makes of that sense. tyranoid. But we have like five different right. types of tyranoids. And that's basically for any level that has all five tyranoids doubling all the enemies that exist in the level and we couldn't fit it in memory but that's not uh, so bad i mean they enemy was what 300k uh i don't remember how big they were do you remember offhand how big they were they were enormous uh, <laughs> uh just their animations uh well 
Okay, so we're, we're going to say they're enormous, and then I'm going to say this really small size. Right. Uh, but you have to realize that all we had to work with was 32 megs, okay? Yes, absolutely. So an enemy out of 32 megs would be about a meg and a half for a normal enemy. Right. The Tyranoids were more, <laughs> much more than that. Uh, organic enemies tended to be way more expensive because they have curves instead of nice angular bits. So they take, they have more mesh, their textures are a little more complicated. Right. So um, they were big and we could not possibly fit two versions of every, of all the enemies on ex that existed on the level with the Tyranoids. And so it was just due to a bunch of magic from Al that we worked on a very, like he created some crazy texture swapping system that we have and uh, we were able to just retexture the Terranoids on load. Like you would load up a level and uh, we would have to just pull the texture out of memory uh, and, and uh, swap and just swap them offhand so we didn't have to hold both the enemies on, uh, on disk. And it was another one of those just crazy hacky things that we did just to work in our, within our limitations of what we wanted to do for the game and what the PS2 could really handle. Because the PS2 was a good machine, but by the time Ratchet 3 was made, it was it was pretty old. I mean, we, I mean, I, we were working on, a, well, we were starting working on a PlayStation 3 game as we were working on, as we were wrapping up Ratchet 3. Yeah, Peter Hastings and Leslie had moved on to doing programming and design. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, like, just... We, we'd already started building the PS3 engine. Yeah, we were at, I mean, we were at the end of the life cycle for the system uh, when we were building this game. So we were just pulling out all the stops uh, to get as much as we could out of this. And, uh, man, it was, <laughs> it was a lot of work. Uh, th that stupid texture thing, man, I just remember... <laughs> I just remember being like, you want to do what exactly? And we had, like, a bunch of meetings trying to convince Brian Algeyer. Just like, it would, would it be that weird if they didn't change? And he's like, yes, it would be really weird if they didn't change. And so we had to do it. I, I totally remember that conversation happening. Uh, yeah, that was, that, was a, that was a weird day. <laughs> yeah, we were just kind of like, we can't do it. And they were like, find a way. You have to do it. And uh, it turned into just this big thing. And I, it's for the best, I guess. I mean, I don't know how many people actually go back and visit the old levels and notice that they're all robotic. But, uh, but they are. They, little they touches, They absolutely are. That's right. All the little things come together to make the game what it is. So I'm, I'm having a very hard time with, uh, with this segment. Uh, why don't you, can you tell them real quick why, uh, why we're not doing the ninjas? Just so that we have some continuity. Uh, yeah. So when I was catching up, uh, this it was a whole weird kerfuffle when we were trying to uh, get the footage all caught up properly, and I knew that yeah, because we hadn't we hadn't published all the episodes right. Yet. And I knew what, our last recorded episode was done uh, on the level with the ninjas, and uh, I thought the segment that we had done when we recorded was the box breaker segment. Uh, but when I rewatched the episode this last week, I realized that the segment that we did was the ship segment. Uh, and so rather than do a completed segment with no reward at the end, we were just we just skipped the box breaker segment uh, and then just wrapped up the Quark comic and then just started up right here. Yes. So we we uh, we may in the in the future go back and do those as a bonus, but uh, you know. Yeah, it depends on what we have occasion to do bonuses. For. Right. Uh, so yeah, so uh, I gotta say the, that we, uh, I think we skipped this over when we when we were uh, talking over the cutscene. But this ha this is the this has my favorite like reading in the game, my line reading in the game. Was that when Nefarious does his little? When he dance? no, when he pops up his fist and he's just like today, it always makes me laugh. I don't know why, <laughs> but he just comes up from the bottom of the screen with his fist held up. And it's just like, it's it's the funniest thing to me. I don't know why. <laughs> because you love Dr. Nefarious, and rightly so. Well, I so. mean, I think everybody has those, that part in the game where they where it's just their favorite reading. Uh, we were, I, it's funny, I was reminiscing with a couple people, because a bunch of us are just going back and playing through the HD collection right now. And uh, Moo, uh, Moo, <laughs> Moo's favorite reading from the game was in the Hollow Star Studios, 
when the director is like, and now Rat, and now Clank must use the monkey to reach that ledge. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, funny. that was that was the one that always made Moo crack up. Uh, I don't know if you have a, a favorite line reading from the game that you that always just makes you laugh. But. Oh yeah, uh, but I don't think we've gotten to it yet, so I'll we'll save I'll, I'll it, save it we'll as a spoiler. It right. Yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, it's definitely Captain Quark uh, that he gives in the ice. Okay. Line. So, uh, if I'm remembering correctly, hopefully I'm not thinking of a line from Ratchet Two, but we'll see. Man, I remember that bio obliterator flying around the level was also uh, a problem. Why was it a problem? Because it's big and uh, it's it's expensive <laughs> and it eats up the frame rate. Uh, when it's moving around what? the level. It's expensive in the sense that it eats up the frame rate, or, or is there no, another it's just way? A, yeah, it's, it's uh... just a lot of polys, and it eats up the frame rate. Um, it's just, just okay. a gigantic thing with all these glowy bits. And it's a very detailed object, the bio-obliterator. By the way, I uh, I did confirm it is clunk. 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 Yeah, with an And L. now we're getting into the clunk fight. Yes. Yes, we are. Which, uh, Carl Grande was a huge fan of Clunk. And, uh, I know he liked this fight a lot. Oh, yes. Carl Grande was, uh, I think he was the t testing manager at this point? I think point? so, yes. Yeah, or he was he was transitioning to being one of the first project managers at Insomniac. Oh, the transparency sorting is so weird. It is a bit weird. The helmet it's is so up. weird. I don't... Ratchet, the Ratchet's helmet being a little off yeah. his head? It seems like the sort of bug that would just crop up at the last minute, but yeah, I'm really it's not, I just don't know how it happened. That's the thing is like, I <laughs> there's got to be some small thing that went wrong in the transfer. I just don't know what it was. And it just so, it's just such a bizarre bug. And I mean, those well, that, that helmet, that helmet was never built into Ratchet's model. It was always attached. Yeah, to for it. some reason, I don't know why we did. Yeah, that. Well, because we had to upgrade it. Like uh, with the with the armor, it, it would be different colors and stuff. I guess, but we upgraded his armor. I don't know. I mean, I. It might just be a holdover from our. There's CC. a lot of stuff that's weird about it, but yes, there's a lot of weird stuff that's on with that helmet anyway. Um, oh. All right, sorry. I'm. Uh, I'm. It's gonna take all my attention here. Although he's uh, almost. He's already was... a quarter dead, Mike. How hard can it is be? he? Uh, oh, those fucking rings. I hate those. Uh, the uh, uh, There's another bug I noticed, and I think I know why it happens. Uh, the the help desk is all delayed by a... Yeah, a I think it's a streaming issue. I think it's a streaming yeah, loading issue. I, I think that's it's what you were talking about, right? Where uh, since everything's laid out differently on the disc, it doesn't pop up instantaneously, so there's a bit yeah. of a load. It's very weird. I mean, I, that help desk was definitely all streaming because we couldn't, we didn't want to load it into the level memory. Ah, fuck! That was just, that's just embarrassing. <sighs> like, you just jumped right off. off the thing. That's... I don't understand why we let people jump off the sides of these. Like, uh, I, I don't know, that's not a decision I would make today. So I'm not sure why, why we did it differently. I don't know. Ah, fuck! Man, that's twice in, in a row you killed yourself the exact same way. Maybe if... Yeah. Maybe if... What, you're going to blame me somehow? Is this what you're going to try to do? No. No, 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 no. I'm, I I was thinking about it, and then I decided to save it. Ah, fuck. So the, the reason I'm having a problem with this uh, ring attack, or that I had a problem with it, is uh, it's not it's non-obvious when it hits the ground because the ground is moving and it's moving and it's coming at an angle, so it's hard to tell when the ring's going to pop out, especially since it's moving towards. I heard the that gasp as you got close to that edge. Which, which, which oh, oh, side sorry. flip? You almost jumped off again. I heard you <laughs> gasp. Oh, maybe maybe I did. I don't know. I can't tell you, man. I did tell you that I was going oh. to... Oh. That was close. Do you remember who uh, who coded this stuff? I think this I think this boss fight was Ken. Um, right, Ken did the... Uh, uh, what's it called? The uh, core comics, and he did this. I think, I think it was him, yes. And I think he did the credits, too. 
possibly. I seem to remember him Seems doing Seems likely. It. Yeah. Oh, can. Oh, wow. Uh, uh, so some of these loads just take a, a half a second longer, and that causes a lot of weird stuff. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, probably could have just done, like, a fade to black during that, but, I mean, the loading is all so weird that I don't even know how how you would put that hook in there. Well, the thing is, I imagine that their directive they're given to um, Idle Minds was to not change anything. Like, don't introduce new content. I'm pretty sure that was their objective. Like, improve, right. and, and, uh, improve existing things, but don't add things. Um, and they're, they're under a, a pretty strict time, you know, uh, restriction, too, right. to make this sort of thing. Uh, you can't have a large team or even a small team spending a ton of time uh, re remastering an old game, you know? So they, they had a bunch of pressure on them, probably. Yeah, so, I mean, I imagine, even though you can say, add a play to back there, I'm pretty sure they were told you can't add anything to the game. Because adding things just means potential bugs. I mean, right. And, uh, um, I mean, I'm pretty sure that, like, even... Because, you know, like, if I were coding it, I, I did coding in this engine, I have no idea where you would even put the hook for that, so... Yeah, it they they had a pretty tough job, and I think they did a great job. I think it's really good. I'm I'm a big fan of it. So, uh, what do you think, Tony? Museum now, or after we're done with all the rest of the levels? Uh, I think we'll take the museum later. Okay, that sounds good to me. So does that mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does that mean then that we're done with Metropolis? I think that means we're done with Metropolis and with this very first episode of Ratchet and Clank Developer Commentary HD. Do you think, Tony, that, that it's worth coming back and doing more HD episodes? Oh, I don't know. I mean, you, I, they are in high def. It is high definition. That is true. Uh, well, let's let's see how it goes. Let's see how let's see how the reception is. So, and then we'll maybe come back to more HD. So, for developer commentary, my name is Mike Stout. Oh, and I am Tony Garcia. Tony, I did that wrong. Let me try one oh. more time. Oh, I see what you did. Yes. For Mike developer Stout. commentary in HD, I am Mike Stout. And I am Tony Garcia. And we'll catch you next time. In HD. Well, how'd you, how's that? Did you like that? I'll, I'll put some echo on it. It'll be pretty sweet.